I hope the screen is visible. Is it visible, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so, very good afternoon to all. So, first of all, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry for the delayed session because of uh, some uh, constraints. I couldn't be able to join on time. So let me start today's discussion. <clears throat> uh, uh, so I welcome you all for seven days nation workshop or FDP on research methodology. It's organized by uh, Iwachi Academy, uh, India. And today I'll be uh, discussing about effective article writing uh, for Scopus and in the science publications. So I myself, uh, Dr. Prem Kumar from uh, the Indian College of Engineering in Bangalore. So in today's discussion, <clears throat> what I'll be discussing is uh, uh, various uh, type of uh, publications like research publications and uh, review paper publications and how to select the journals and uh, how to sell how to what are, what are all the structures of the research paper uh, and uh, what are the things are required for the paper submission and how uh, the journals are, or the related journals are selected for your application or for your research. Okay. And in addition, I thought of uh, discussing today uh, about uh, chat GPT, how we can uh, use the chat GPT for research paper writing. So that also I'll be discussing in today's session. Okay, so this is what uh, today's agenda. So first I'll be talking about how to write a quality research papers and uh, chat GPT for uh, research paper writing. Okay, what are the pros and cons? and the research tools what are the different research tools are available uh, for uh, writing article or review article or uh, the project proposals and the selection of journals so once the paper is uh, written then where to select how to uh, find a good journal and how to find the time frame for each journal so that i'll be discussing and finally i'll be talking about the research profiles Okay, so the first I'll move on to uh, why we are uh, going for the publication. So this everyone knows it. I just want to reiterate it. Uh, why we need publication. So because see, the last three, four years, before three years, uh, none of the people are discussed about the publication. So the people are doing it, but there is no much importance as given to the publications. Uh, but nowadays, uh, uh, since we people are moving towards uh, a lot of rankings, uh, especially you know the NIRF rankings are viable now, and uh, the research uh, metric is based on this publication. So uh, that's what the main primary uh, uh, the need of the publications are. You know that's why the people are focusing on the publications. Even you might be here in your working institutions or uh, the people who are doing. Uh, PhD or the uh, master's degree, and everyone is forcing you to do the publications. Maybe it is academic mandate, or it may be uh, some other things or uh, some other force uh, to do it. So uh, the first thing I just uh, why uh, we need publications. So it's because you know the primary objective is the dissemination of the knowledge. When we do something that need to be disseminated to the outside world, so that's the thing why we are going for the publication and validation in the peer review. See, uh, we are doing some research, but uh, whether that research is good or uh, it's uh, it, whether we are doing it in a right way or wrong way. Okay, so whether the validation is done properly or not, it's all. Uh, uh, uh obviously when we publish it when we uh, submit a paper for the publication so it will go for the rigorous peer review system so obviously uh, the experts in that particular field will uh, evaluate your uh, complete paper and they'll give their comments so that uh, we can come to know that our research direction is correct or not and advancements of uh, science okay the publications are fundamental means of advancing scientific progress and this process drives the further research because when we don't have any publication, then how do we know that uh, what other things are happening in India or what other things are happening in the world? So obviously the publications are required so that we can take it as a for the challenge and we can start improving and we can have some kind of scientific breakthroughs. And the career advancement, as I told you, whether it is for the promotion or it's uh, it's for the PhD degree or the master's degree. Okay, so obviously you know the publications are uh, much required. And as I said, uh, for the academic recognition, see the people nowadays uh, the academicians are recognized by the publishing papers and uh, the quality of the research metrics. So based on that, uh, the academicians are getting recognized nowadays. Okay, and the impact impact on the policy and practices. You know, uh, when we do something, uh, when we do something, uh, 
uh, it results when it is published then obviously the policy makers or practitioners or professionals they start uh, reference our papers and this is the empirical evidence for the people uh, to create a new policy or to create a new practices obviously for that purpose the publications are required and the collaboration in the networking yes uh, obviously it, it encourages the publication encourages uh, uh, the wide collaboration so not only within the institute not only within the state not only within the nation so for the worldwide collaboration and networking obviously the publications are mandatory and the preservation of the knowledge obviously is a permanent record the publications are the permanent record of scientific findings so that the future generation can refer to our uh, of findings and they can do some kind of uh, good research and they can give some kind of uh, scientific breakthroughs so these are all uh, the important criteria why we are going for the publications and what is the research paper as uh, we know that there are two different papers in general we have a research paper and a review paper and the research paper it is a kind of a, a specific writing okay it means that we'll be focusing on a specific topic or the single topic and we'll be presenting some methodology and we'll be applying that methodology and we'll be uh, uh, doing some kind of a study the simulation study and the experimental study and with empirical evidences we'll be writing the research paper uh, research paper but in case of a review paper uh, so many people have done uh, the research paper will be consolidating the research papers and will be reviewing the same and will be giving some kind of a challenges and it is a kind of a pathway uh, to improve the, uh, the research in that particular area so that's what the review paper okay and the research paper is a comprehensive document that represents a findings analysis and interpretation of a particular study okay it's not uh, the widest study it's only discuss about the methodology what you are going to use it and what uh, uh, algorithms or what kind of methodology you are going to use it only we'll be discussing about that and we'll be investigating and we'll be analyzing it uh, completely only about that particular method or uh, the algorithm or not whatever you are going to propose it hmm. It is typically written by the scholars or academics and it is used to contribute to the existing knowledge in a particular field or the discipline. And the research papers are the foundations of a modern science and it is the most effective way to share the information across the world. Right? As I told, when we do something, it should be disseminated properly. So it will reach the people uh, very quickly and very easily, uh, not only inside the country, but also uh, to the other people uh, around, the, around the world. So obviously it will reach multiple people uh, so that <clears throat> we, can have, we can also have some kind of familiarity and we can also have some kind of recognition and also it, it will be a foundation for the modern science. So, and the researchers state their findings plainly and with corresponding evidences so that other researchers can consequently use the paper in their own research. So when uh, when uh, when any of the researcher is publishing a research paper, they are definitely they'll be proposing some kind of methods or algorithms for their pur purpose. And it is a, a, a corresponding evidences also they'll be providing it. So what the people will do once it is uh, given to the people and others people will start uh, using that particular algorithm and they can compare their algorithm with the existing one so that they can develop their own research. So these are all uh, uh, the reasons why uh, we need a research paper and what is a research paper and how long the research paper this is what uh, the questions in uh, the most of the young people mindset so what should be the uh, length of the paper. <clears throat> so as we know that we have different types of papers like a research paper, review paper, short communications, letters, editorial, different versions of publications are available. Since uh, my focus is more on the uh, research paper, so most of my talk is only about the research paper. But apart from that, we have so many things. So if it is a research paper, you know, the length of uh, 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 the words, because see, some journals have uh, different, different restrictions. Some journals have uh, the page wise restrictions some journals have word wise restrictions so likewise i just based on my own experiences i just listed a few points here. so uh, the mostly whether it is a research paper or review paper or the short communication of the letters it will be within 2000 to 12000 words or sometimes it will be more than 12000 words if we are writing a review paper 
So, however, the longer papers are more common in certain disciplines where extensive data analysis and discussions are often applied, included. See, suppose if we are writing a paper on some kind of algorithms or you are proposing some kind of algorithms, then obviously you have to do a lot of statistical study. In such case, some of the time, you no, know, the paper length will be more than 12,000 words, but it, it is better always if you restrict within the words prescribed here what I have given. It's all from my own experiences. So typically, the research papers runs around 4,000 to 8,000 words. But it is common to see that short papers, that is the short communication or the letters, it will be within 2,000 words. The long papers, in the sense, the review papers, it will be over 12,000 words. Mm -hmm. So while length is important, the quality and the clarity of the contents are also very important. You know, So uh, you should not reduce the words just by removing uh, the actual content of the paper. So you should keep the content of the paper and you should describe the methodology properly and you should give the importance to each section at the same time you have to express everything uh, uh, concisely so that you can meet these restrictions also. It is crucial to focus on the presenting a well structured, a coherent, and concise paper that effectively communicates the research finding, analysis, and interpretation. So, uh, this word length is completely, which includes the references also. Okay. It doesn't mean that it excludes the references. So, it is including the references. So, this word length is given. Okay. Uh, sometimes, as I told you, if it is 500 to 1000 words extra uh, sometimes doesn't matter but uh, but some journals have uh, the specific uh, restrictions so in that case obviously you have to restrict whatever the way you do okay it should be uh, within that uh, word limit what they are uh, prescribing it and uh, what should be the structure of the paper so when you're writing any uh, research paper and what is the uh, skeleton of the paper so that i have uh, given here so first the thing is the title. So the title should be concise, informative, and accurately reflect the content of the paper. You should not give any generic title. Okay, it should be a specific title to uh, towards your study. So don't give any uh, generic title. And also, uh, most of the time, the journals are insisting us to use uh, the number of words for the title. Is so they are asking to uh, restrict to ten words. Okay, uh, that is the optimal length. Okay, because most of the time I'll be getting the comments from the editors and the reviewers, uh, reduce the uh, title or uh, just to restrict the title to 10 words like that. I'm getting the comments. So based on all these, my experiences, I'm just telling you, I'm just suggesting you uh, to go with a short title, but it should, it should be a meaningful title. And uh, as I told, it should not be a generic one. <clears throat> And okay, then next is abstract. So abstract is nothing but it is a brief summary. Okay, so brief summary of the complete paper. And uh, here there is a word restriction. Okay, so it should be between 150 to 250 words. Okay, it should not be more than 250 and it should not be less than 150 because less than 150 means obviously you cannot uh, summarize a paper com properly. So it is better always to keep within 150 to 250 words. And when you write the abstract, uh, my suggestion is in first two, three lines is just introduce your research. And second two, three lines is just to discuss about your novelty. And uh, next uh, three, four lines is just discuss about the methodology. And the next two, three lines is just discuss about the findings. Okay. In this way, you just organize the abstract so that you can uh, clearly describe the summary of your research paper within the prescribed word limit. And the introduction, so introduction, it is a set of uh, uh, the research paper study or uh, it's a kind of a background information. So mostly, you know, uh, most of the time uh, the research papers uh, will include uh, the introduction, the literature review in the same uh, introduction section. But some papers, they'll be introducing the research paper separately and they'll be having a separate section to discuss the literature review. But my uh, suggestion is you discuss the literature study in the, intro in the introduction section itself so that you can avoid more number of chapters. OK, so it is better to have the literature study in the introduction section itself. This is applicable only for the paper writing and for the thesis. You don't do it like that. OK, it's only for the paper writing. Mm -hmm. And the methodology. So as I told, the methodology is the heart of the system. And here you have to describe the complete research design or the what methods you are going to propose or what algorithm you are going to propose and what are the data collections, what are the data analysis you are going to propose. All these things need to be properly concise, concisely you have to discuss in the uh, methodology section. 
and the next one is the results section in the results section you have to uh, discuss about the findings of the study it should be objective organized logically using appropriate tables and figures so don't write any kind of uh, theoretical statements in the results okay you should go with some kind of uh, empirical evidences as i told uh, you, the evidences may be through the simulation study or maybe uh, through the survey or it may be through the experimentation so you have to do some kind of uh, a study and the findings need to be properly illustrated with the help of figures and that need to be tabled properly that uh, data or the values whatever you are getting it that need to be recorded in the table and that would that need to be represented in the paper and that need to be analyzed critically in the content okay all these things will come in the research section mm -hmm. Okay, and the discussion and the discussion section is very important because most of the people are omitting this uh, section. Okay, please don't omit this section. Okay, so you should keep a discussion section. The discussion section, you have to interpret and analyze the results in light of research questions and objectives. So, uh, why your method is uh, performing better? Okay, so and uh, what are the reasons? Uh, uh, to get a good result so like that you have to discuss in the discussion section and, and also in the discussion section itself we have to discuss about the challenges and the drawbacks and you know the, uh, the benefits of your uh, uh, methodology what you are going to propose it that need to be uh, disclosed in the discussion section itself and then finally the conclusion the conclusion summarizes the key findings and the impl implications and the restates the research questions and objective and provides a concise summary see uh, here uh, you uh, one important thumb rule is whatever the phrases you are using it in the abstract that need not that should not be reflected in the conclusion the conclusion should be a summary based on the findings from the study okay so there again you don't use the phrases what you have used in the abstract so the conclusion need to be proper okay and need to be concise okay as uh, uh, maybe uh, you can take it as a suggestion so don't write the conclusion section more than 150 words and when you finish the conclusion section what you have to do is you have to write the extension of the study okay so that is also very important that you disclose in the conclusion section itself so what are the future extensions future study of the method what you have proposed it okay and the references and you have to use a proper references in the proper style okay and uh, the number of uh, references is also uh, uh, plays a major role okay that i'll be discussing in the next slide Okay, and finally, if you have any uh, appendixes or something, if you feel not necessary in the main content, if you keep it in the uh, back side of the paper, the, if you feel like that, that need to be included in the appendix session. Okay, so this is uh, maybe possible when you're writing any kind of uh, uh, a derivation based paper some kind of so, some people who are doing research in the mathematics so a lot of derivations will be there those derivations no, need not to be discussed in the main content of the paper that can be shifted to the appendices similarly if sorry if your study is having more number of tables if you feel that the table is not necessary in the main content that need to be again shifted to the appendix section Okay, it is not mandatory, but if you feel it is not uh, necessary in the main content, that you can shift it. Okay, and the structure of the most scientific papers. So this is a consolidated uh, list, and the title uh, maximum, as I said, uh, maximum use. Try to use ten words. Uh, okay, and abstract. It should be within one hundred fifty to two hundred words. As I told, uh, the introduction and the literature study. You just club it. You just keep only introduction section. Okay, and do a thorough literature by referring to the new and relevant papers. Don't take very old papers and do literature review. Uh, when you do like that, then obviously the paper will be rejected by stating that uh, the people have not referred uh, the recent study. So it is always referred to a, a recent paper and the relevant paper. Okay, and do proper literature and that need to be included in the introduction, introduction section. And the methodology, the methodology must, must be specific don't discuss any known facts here the whatever the unknown facts are there whatever your idea that need to be discussed in the methodology section or the method section okay and the results you should do the comprehensive analysis don't keep only the pictures and tables okay so uh, you have to if you keep something inside that need to be uh, justified properly with the uh, proper evidences 
okay and the discussion section so you there you have to discuss the findings limitations on the challenges and the conclusion of the future extension as i told it's, it should be a concise summary so you can restrict the conclusion to 150 words and the future extension maybe uh, you have to give uh, the what are the different ways to extend your paper so that need to be disclosed in the uh, at the end of the conclusion section and acknowledgement if you have any funding mandate, so just mention in the acknowledgement section, or if you want to acknowledge your institute, or if you want to acknowledge any person, though that name is not there in the paper, if you want to acknowledge any person, so that that need to be discussed in the acknowledge, acknowledgement section. And a number of references, uh, so this is again uh, matters, okay, if it is a research paper, minimum try to refer 25 papers, so more than 25 is there better always and if it is a review paper try to refer minimum 100 papers 100 relevant and recent papers okay and the tables and figures obviously i i told you when you write the research section you should include more number of tables and figures okay attractive figures you have to keep it but don't repeat the contents of the table and the figures okay for example if you keep something in the table okay that same thing need not to be the uh, in the picture format okay so if you something if you keep it in the table that you leave it okay or if you something something if you keep it as a figure that you leave it but don't keep the duplicate uh, results in both the figures and the table so try to avoid unnecessary tables and figures so this is what the structure for the most scientific manuscripts so uh, they, these are all again based on the uh, own uh, experience as well as uh, since i am the editor of uh, editor and review of uh, many journals so from those experiences i'm just listing i'm just summarizing the structure of the most scientific manuscripts okay apart from that uh, another important fact is the cover letter okay you just try to give some time to write the cover letter because in the most of the time the editor in chief will read only the cover letter okay they will not refer to the paper completely so most of the time they will read the cover letter if the cover letter is not serving any content then definitely your paper the getting uh this rejection is more so that's what you have to give some focus on the cover letter in the cover letter you just try to disclose what is the importance of the paper what is the scope of the paper okay and what is the novelty of the paper that need to be disclosed in the cover letter okay and also you have to write try to uh mention that uh, uh we just refer some of your papers from your journal like that this statement if we include then the people will feel that the paper submitted is uh, within the scope of the journal okay and try to refer if because when you submit the paper you try to submit to the uh, uh specific and uh, uh the related journals okay don't submit to some kind of uh, irrelevant journal then obviously getting rejection is always more okay so when you write the cover letter the word what i said that you included so definitely you can avoid the desk rejection from the editor in chief okay so now uh it's a uh, time for the chat gpt okay because you know the chat gpt this uh, this mantra came in the uh, month of march 2023 okay the, now the many of the people started using the chat gpt so here i'm just discussing uh, what are the pros and cons of uh, chat gpt and what are the myths of uh, chat gpt myths and facts of uh, chat gpt so that i'll be discussing in uh, today's session so what is chat gpt okay the chat gpt is a tool okay it is a ai tool open ai tool okay and it is a useful tool for generating ideas okay and it can be useful to generate initial draft for the research paper okay however there are a few things need to be considered before using chat gpt for the research paper writing okay so that i'll be disclosing it so again i'm telling you it's chat gpt is a ai tool it's completely a software tool okay it can generate some ideas because this ai tool is trained with a uh, pros of data available in the internet okay based on that it is trained okay so based on all those data it will be generating the ideas and it, it may generate at the initial draft for your paper but with this you cannot write a complete paper so this point you keep it in mind okay and start using it mm. the first one what what need to be considered is fact checking okay so while chat gpt is generally reliable it is always important to fact check the information it provides you should verify any claims or data you use in your research from the reliable and authoritative sources see uh, when the chat GPT is generating any content, 
okay so don't believe the content blindly you take the content you read it and you check with some kind of expert members whether this content is proper or not is it reliable or not is it authenticated content or not okay based on a fact checking only you have to take the content okay directly blindly you don't take any data that is generated by the chat gpt <laughs> okay and the critical thinking so as you know uh, the chat gpt is a ai tool open ai tool it can generate text okay and it always will not provide comprehensive analysis okay so it is it, it will generate only a text but comprehensive analysis from the research side we people have to do it chat gpt will not do any kind of comprehensive analysis okay as a researcher it is essentially to critically evaluate the information generated by the chat gpt and incorporate your own analysis and interpretation this is very important okay it will not think critically okay since it is a text based system it will do it will give just a some kind of a text based on the content what you are going to provide it okay but don't believe it take it and analyze and interpret it in your own way and the structure and the organization as uh, the chat gpt generates a text based pattern and examples it has been in its training data so as i told it is based on uh, the data which is available in the internet okay so it will not provide organized content so obviously the shuffled content only it will provide okay so don't take it and put it in the paper as i told for the structure you need to follow certain guidelines okay but based on that guideline the chat gpt will not give the content okay it's your duty that you have to take the content you have to verify the content you have to analyze the content and you have to organize the content properly okay and the citations as as of now chat gpt is not having any add-ons for referencing maybe in future there is a possibility to have some add-on because now, uh, now for the premium users, they have started giving some kind of add-ons, okay? Uh, but uh, so far, there is no referencing add-on is available. Maybe in future, it will be available. But as of now, there is no built-in citation or referencing capability. So it is your duty to uh, refer and cite properly, okay? So now how we can use a chat GPT to write a scientific research paper. Okay. So that I'll tell you. So define your research question and hypothesis. Okay. Say, so suppose if you want to uh, do some kind of research in any field. Okay. Then you can ask chat GPT. So what is the recent trend in this particular field? In what way I can do my research? So like that, you can define, you first define your research question and post it. Definitely, it will give a good idea for you to do a further research. Okay. So in this way, you can use ChatGPT and conduct a literature review. So as I told you, the ChatGPT is trained with a lot of contents available in the internet. Okay, so if you are writing any literature study, if you are writing any literature study, you can start to use the chat GPT. Okay, and we, you can ask the chat GPT to do a proper literature study. Okay, uh, but it, the uh, keyword should be proper. Okay, and the research question should be proper. Then only it will do a proper and relevant uh, literature study, or else it will give some kind of shuffled data. Then finally, it will not be useful for your research paper. <laughs> and gather it, analyze data, and you first you collect the data through experimentation or some surveys or other means, then use ChatGPT to analyze the data and interpret your data, because your ChatGPT also can generate some kind of quotes. If you give some kind of data, it will start writing some kind of scripts, okay? And based on the script, you can also interpret your uh, results, what you are going to observe it, and you can also visualize the results with the help of some kind of figures and tables, okay? and organize your paper so uh, you can ask uh, this tool to organize your paper by creating an outline structuring your arguments and ensuring that your paper is well organized and flows logically because when you post something uh, in the tool what will happen it will tries to check whether the content is in the flow or not okay whether the content is free from the uh, grammatical mistakes and the punctuation mistakes or not so it will check everything it will tries to organize your paper properly okay but again as i told you should do a proper fact check okay and you can ask your uh, tool to verify uh, pre proofread your paper because this will be very useful tool if uh, for the 
people who are uh, 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 the non speak non English speaking uh, people. Okay, so especially for the Indians. Okay, so because our official language is different. Okay, we are not English speaking people. So if you write something, you can ask the chat GPT to check the grammatical mistakes and punctuations, uh, the spelling errors. It will try to check the content and it will try to remove the grammatical mistakes and punctuations. Okay, but again, you have to do a review again uh, to check whether the content generated by the chat GPT is proper or not. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this way, as I told, you can use a chat GPT. Okay, and uh, what are the myths about chat GPT in scientific research paper writing? So, nowadays, most of the people are thinking that we can use the tool to write complete research paper. Okay, so what are the myths are there, and what is the fact? So, that we will discuss now. So, the first myth is whether the chat GPT can write a complete research scientific paper entirely on its own. This is what the many people are thinking that we can write complete research paper uh, with the help of chat GPT. Okay, so the fact is while chat GPT can assist in generating content for the research, uh, research paper, it cannot write a paper entirely on its own. So as I told, the human expertise, a human critical thinking, and the analysis are always essential in the writing process. Okay, so don't believe this tool completely. Okay, don't write any paper completely with the help of ChatGPT. It is just a supporting tool. You can use it, you can see, you can take a help from it, and you can write the paper on your own. Okay, and what is the second myth? The second myth is the ChatGPT can replace human researchers in the scientific research. So this is what many people are saying that it will completely replace the human researchers. But the fact is, ChatGPT is just a tool. It can assist in the research process and the writing process, but it cannot replace human researchers at all because always the expertise and skills of human researchers are required to check the fact. Okay, so don't rely on this myth. So based on the a fact you have to work on it and the other myth is can chat gpt analyze and interpret the data without human input no definitely it's not okay so uh, from the human side you have to give some kind of data and you can ask the chat gpt to analyze and interpret the data but as a tool as an ai tool it will not generate any data on its own okay and it will not access any data on its own okay as a human, you should put input and it will analyze and it will interpret. But you keep it in mind when you keep some, when you in, in when you give input to the chat GPT, that will also store in that database. So chat GPT again trained with your data. So again, it's like you are disclosing the data, data to the open uh, open source community. Okay. At that point, also you have to be very careful. If you have any confidential data, don't put it in the chat GPT so that it will store it in, in its database. If anyone asks, it will definitely it will give the data to the people. Okay, you have to be very careful if you have any confidential data. So then next with this, can chat GPT generate content without any plagiarism? So it's absolutely not possible because as I told you. It will generate the text based on the training data. The training data is nothing but the paper, it, uh, uh, the chat GPT, which is trained by uh, lakhs of papers and crores of papers. Then obviously, it will take the content from the paper and it will write the literature study. Okay. Obviously, getting 100% plagiarism free content is not at all possible. Okay. Even if it generates, you have to review and you have to edit the content generated by the chat GPT to ensure it is original and appropriately cited okay and the chat GPT can write in any scientific field yes actually to say we can use chat GPT in any scientific scientific field okay but it will it is used only for uh, writing purpose okay and it also depends upon the science See, uh, we cannot say that for the medical field can be used this for medical field, we can use it as a supportive tool, but you should not uh, believe this uh, blindly. Okay, so if you ask uh, the chat GPT to give some kind of medi uh, medicine for this particular disease, it will uh, it will give some kind of medicine name, but you should not believe that. As I told, you should take the uh, the proper prescription from the doctor when you have to take it. Okay, again, you should not believe it. So though it can be useful for most of the scientific field, 
but again it depends because a lot of ethical issues are there so we have to check all the facts and we have to use it sure. the next thing with this chat gpt can generate content that is free of errors and mistakes yes because it is having inbuilt uh, tools for checking the errors and mistakes but always it is not so okay there is a possibility of errors and mistakes but as a human researcher we have to check for the errors and the mistakes manually okay so chat gpt can generate content that is better than human written no it's absolutely not possible it's just a machine so no no one can replace the human writing content okay always the content written by the human is better but it can uh, give some kind of content which is almost uh, uh, comparable with uh, the human written content but we cannot replace it okay the chat gpt content is based on machine learning and natural language processing while it can produce high quality content it is not better than human written content always that fact you keep it in mind chat gpt can write a content that is more persuasive than a, a human written content no so obviously the persuasion requires a human communication skills and emotional intelligence the chat gpt content may not be as a convention as a human written content this one also you keep it in mind the chat gpt can write content that is completely objective yes so as i told you it will do the analysis based on the data given by the humans therefore may contain subjective bias it is important to review and edit any content generated by the chat gpt okay and chat gpt can make up for a lack of research and knowledge so as a tool it can be used as a tool and you can generate some kind of ideas with the tool but again that idea is it possible or not again as the expert you have to think and you should get some kind of expert reviews then based on that you can go ahead okay so these are all the top 10 myths uh, uh, about chat gpt and i have given the facts about all the myths okay so uh, for the unknown people who are not aware of uh, uh, the chat gpt i'll just give some kind of a uh, raw content generated by the chat gpt so you can see that uh, this is what a chat gpt window so you can you can have uh, the empty page like this so once you create the login since i have the plus login that is a premium membership i have i have not uh, demonstrate the plus uh, thing and i just go with the new new chat so the new chat will be open and here you can ask any question okay so for example i'm just asking can you uh, prescribe any medicine for headache okay so i'm just asking i'm just putting this question let us see what it is going to answer it you can see that uh, but I'm sorry, but as a uh, language model, I cannot prescribe any medicine. Only licensed healthcare professionals are who are to diagnose the medical condition. So uh, it also tries to give some kind of because if I go with uh, uh, some kind of premium uh, versions, it will suggest some medicine. But again, the statements it will provide. Okay, so suppose if you want to do any research, okay. Uh, so again, I just delete this. Again, I'm starting new uh, content. Can you? Uh, give some uh, research direction in the field of big data analytics. I'm just asking uh, some kind of new research field uh, in the area of uh, big data analytics. Okay, I just put this question. You can see that what are the different way you can take up this research it will tries to list whatever the possible uh, the research fields are available in that particular field okay you can take it up and you can do you can start your own research suppose for example if you want to work on this particular field privacy and security and you can put some questions based on the privacy and security and it will tries to guide you uh, where and how you can start this research okay so in this way you can start use the chat gpt okay this is a simple demonstration i have given you if you are free you just go and create a login uh, uh, and start using it uh, okay but as i told uh, uh, by keeping the bits and facts you have to work on it okay and one more thing uh, one question i asked here it's the myths so what is that is yeah this yeah 
This is what the Metroid chat GPT can generate content that is 100% plagiarism free. So here I just want to give you one more input. Okay. So even if the chat GPT gives 100% plagiarism free content, okay, now we have a tool, okay, to capture what is the AI content of the paper. Okay. So we have some kind of plagiarism tools, professional plagiarism tools like uh, uh, we have a Tonitin and uh, I dedicate, okay, in in uh, Tonitin tool, they have AI facility, okay. When your when your paper is checked for the plagiarism, it will give two scores, okay. One is a plagiarism score, another one is the AI score, okay. Even if your plagiarism score is zero, okay, it will show you the AI content, okay. If your AI content is more than if your a content is more than 10 percentage your even if your plagiarism is zero percentage your paper will be rejected okay i hope you got the point okay so when you generate the content with a chat gpt even if it gives 100 percent plagiarism free content it will be captured easily by the plagiarism tool called turnitin Okay, I'll just give you one simple example, one simple demonstration for this. Okay, and you see that uh, I'm just asking something about privacy and secure security. So I'm just asking some statement on privacy and security. Okay, so it is trying to write some kind of contents here. Okay, and I just capture some two, three uh, points here. And we have some kind of AI detector. So I'll just keep some AI detectors here. So some uh, free AI detectors also viable. You can take it and you can check it. Okay. So this is a, one of the AI uh, detector. Okay. So just open it. And here, just put the information. Okay. The whatever it is generated by the chat GPT. I just copied it and pasted it here. And you just check for the content. Just to warn. Since it looks like a bulletin, it is not uh, uh, taking it as a a generated content. I'm just writing some more. I'm just writing some more contents here. Okay, so I just copy this and I'm just pasting it here. Again, there are restrictions when you go with uh, when you go with uh, these kind of AI directors because it has some kind of uh, uh, restrictions like number of uh, characters should be less like that. Okay, and they have a lot of AI directors. Okay, I'll just uh, show you one by one. Uh, so this is one of the AI content director. So I'm just uh, checking it here also. Check for AI content, and another one is there. Okay, this is also I'm testing it. You can see that uh, you can see that the content it is generated by the human, like that it is showing. Okay, even this and this uh, even this tool is also showing that the content is generated by the human. Okay, see here you can see that uh, uh, when I keep it here, no, when I keep it here, it will show that twenty percent probability for the human and the eighty percent probability for the AI. Okay, likewise, you can get the content. See, likewise, your Turnitin tool captures your A content properly and it will show the A score separately. As I told you already, the A, if your A score is greater than 10, automatically your paper will be rejected. So be careful when you use chat GPT. Okay, don't use it uh, blindly. Okay, you just use it wisely to write the human, uh, some research paper. Okay, you just take it as a supportive tool, but don't take it as a complete tool to write the paper. Okay, and what are the other tools we have? So I just quickly go through the tools. Okay, so these are the tools, uh, you, the node tools uh, like uh, Microsoft Office, Latex, Open Source, uh, Open Office, and LibreOffice. Okay, all are the word uh, word processing tools. Okay, and uh, mostly uh, for the research purpose or proposal writing, whatever it is. Okay, most of the time, most of the time we we'll use Microsoft Office. Suppose if your paper is having more number of mathematical expressions, it is always suggested to use. 
a latex latex version okay and if you feel that microsoft office is a commercial version if you don't have money to buy the commercial version of the microsoft office it is always better to go with open source office tools like open so open office and libre office okay and uh, we have a lot of uh, drawing tools okay these are the drawing tools which i listed very few okay so many other tools also available okay in which uh, Microsoft Visio and the Draw.io. So these are the very good tools. Okay. But Microsoft Visio again is a commercial tool. That Draw.io is a completely a free tool. You can have online version of the tool and offline version is also available. You take it and you can use it for any kind of field. Okay. It is not only for engineering, it is also useful for scientific and it is also useful for mathematicians. Okay. For most of the people or most of the researchers, the draw.io will be very useful tool, a very useful drawing tool. Okay. And the reference management software, we have a lot of uh, referencing tools are available uh, so for i just listed a few uh, referencing tools okay zotero mendeley endnote refworks i2v paper pile and dozier okay in this uh mendeley and then endnote is a professional tools well, other tools also professional but uh, the most of the people will use mendeley and endnote but uh if you, if you take endnote endnote is given by the clarivate analytics but it's a commercial version but mendeley it's uh, given by the elsewhere but it is a free version okay so for up to the memory of 1 gb it is a free version okay and if it is more than 1 gb then obviously you, know, you have to pay money for that okay but uh, for the uh, static researchers obviously the mendeley the 1 gb of as basic is almost sufficient to uh, do proper referencing okay so mendeley is a bit better tool my suggestion is go with mendeley so you can start using it even at day one okay but always try to use some kind of reference management tool or else it's very it will be a very big headache when you write research paper or review paper or the thesis whatever it is okay because each journal is having different different uh, uh, referencing style okay if you are not using the tile uh, uh, this kind of tools then manually you have to edit the references okay it is a time consuming process so or uh, it's my sincere advice try to go with any kind of reference management tools okay and choosing a journal okay so when you choose a journal you have to ask you a uh, four question uh, what are the audience do you want to reach okay how prestigious your journal in the field okay and how long does it takes to publish this paper and how much does it cost okay you just ask yourself this four question and based on the answer you just go for it okay so what audience do you want to reach so you have to read what is the journal scope okay and who reads the journal based on that you have to select the journal okay and you should uh, the prestigious it's based on uh, the metrics research metrics may be a site score it may be a sign um, uh, journal impact factor or journal citation indicators are based on this you have to select the journal and based on the time frame okay how long this journal will take uh, to give a review and to publish okay so based on this analysis you select the journal and you know nowadays most of uh, the journals are moving towards open access if it is open access you have to pay article processing charge if the article processing charge is affordable by the uh, uh, researcher then you can go with open access uh, journals or else you try to go with the subscription based journals okay and indexing databases yes uh, if you want to uh, publish your paper at the top quality journal you have to see that uh, indexing databases okay most of the people they might be knowing the scopus databases even the scopus we have different quartiles like q1 q2 q3 and q4 okay and but the top quality is always the web of science in the web of science also we have the top metric and the lower metric is there the top metric is a cie and ssei and the lower metric is ESCI, that is SCI is a science uh, citation index expander and SSCI is nothing but social science citation index. All your uh, arts related papers will come under SSCI and all scientific based paper and engineering papers will come under SCI. And uh, if the journalists want to index to buy SCI, the preliminary step is the ESCI, that is the Emerging Source uh, Citation Index. They will keep the journal under this indexing databases for two, three years. They will observe the data, the journal quality. Okay, then based on that, they will promote or de-promote the journal. Okay, then CPCI is nothing but Conference uh, Proceeding Citation Index. Okay, but uh, the most of the people, uh, they are unaware of uh, the quartiles is applicable for SCI also okay so few people might be knowing that the quartiles are there for elsewhere but similar uh, way for sca also we have a quartile but uh, these two quartiles are different so though your journalist 
in Q1 uh, uh, scopus, it will not be in Q1 SCI. Okay, it may be Q2 or Q3. Okay, so don't uh, mix up both. Okay, uh, the web of science portal is different, and uh, elsewhere portal is different. And apart from these two, and uh, most of the people are knowing the Google Scholar. Okay, so the Google Scholar it will index whatever the paper you write, whether it is a math design, it's a, it is a technical report, it's a white paper, whatever it's a thesis or it's a conference paper, book, or whatever it is, it will index. But the scoopers will index only. Uh, the conference papers and the research paper and review paper and web of science is also indexes only conference paper and the research papers and review papers okay but google scholar it will index everything okay and apart from that we have some other indexing databases also like pubmed uh, dyag and ea competex pubmed and ea basco cosmos impact factor so, so many other databases is also available but most of the time, real people will focus only on the web of science groupers and Google scholars. So based on this, you can select the journal. Okay. And the threads of predated journal. Okay. So I'll just summarize what, what is the problem with the predated journal. So predated journals are it's a fake journal. Okay. They will open the journal in the name of the original journal. Okay. They will not conduct any kind of peer review if you submit the paper. Uh, within one or two days, they will accept the paper and they will ask you to pay the huge amount like $500, $1,000. They will ask you to pay and they will claim that the pay in the journal is indexed in SCI and scoopers like that. They will claim and uh, you people will be cheated by them and you pay the money. Once the paper is published, it will not be indexed anywhere. Okay, even in Google Scholar also, your paper will not be indexed okay so your paper also lost and your money is also lost too. so be aware of predatory journals so when you so when you want to submit the paper go to the authenticated site and check multiple times if you feel that it is authorized website and submit your paper okay if you are getting any email that uh, you submit the paper to this journal is spoken like that if you're getting any email advertisement email don't respond to those emails okay so it may be a predatory journal okay so that's what my sincere advice is don't uh, believe the people blindly okay do a multiple research on the journal okay whether it is authenticated one or not once you confirm it it is authenticated and submit your paper okay and one more thing you keep it in your mind if you are getting acceptance in one or two days then obviously that is a predatory journal that point you also keep it in mind okay and the statement of work and conflict of interest because when you write the paper you have to disclose these two important uh content one is a author contribution statement and another one is a potential conflict of interest and funding sources okay so if if your paper is having multiple authors you have to describe what is the contribution of each author that is we call it as author contribution statement and if you have any conflict with any of the people in the research field okay if you are having conflict with any of the research institutes okay so that need to be disclosed properly if you receive any fundings okay then the funding sources need to be disclosed properly in the paper okay these two are the important statements nowadays but previously it was not like that but nowadays these two statements are very important when you submit the paper okay and you should not do the multiple submission okay you once you submit a paper okay just wait for the decision once you get the decision if it is accepted it's okay if it is rejected then you go to the next journal okay when you do multiple submissions now the journals are they are tracking the people easily if they capture that you are doing a multiple submission you will be banned to submit the paper to that respective journal and to that respective publisher for five years okay and also the information will be shared to the institute okay so don't do multiple submission this is my sincere advice okay and the manuscript must be scanned through uh, some plagiarism tool so we have a lot of plagiarism tools but mostly the professional tools are authenticate and turn it in but turn it in is also having the a facility as i told you the turn it in along with the plagiarism content it will also showing the a content also okay so uh, comparatively the turn it in is always good the authenticated is authenticate is also a professional tool but it is not having any AA facility as of now okay and if you are ready to submit the paper then you have to see that 
or what journal you have to submit okay so these all the recommending systems are available okay so based on any uh, recommending system uh, you can submit your paper okay for each publisher i just suggested the recommending system the first one is for ieee uh, transactions or any kind of ieee papers and the second one is for elsewhere any uh, journals in elsewhere and next is springer next is taylor and francis uh, francis and the fifth uh, one is a wiley and the last two it's a common platform okay first to five tools are uh, the generic the not generic it's a specific to the publisher and the last two are the common one okay i'll just give you the quick introduction about the uh, the journal recommender okay for example i am just uh, typing elsewhere journal finder okay so here what i do is i just click it I just click it and i just want to write some papers on free i'm just keeping the title as a frequency control in micro grid because uh, since i generated with the chat gpt already okay so i'm just keeping it and what i have to do is you have to keep a title as well as the abstract of your paper so here you see i kept the paper title is this and i can keep your abstract like this you just copy a complete abstract and keep it okay and just click find journals okay when you click this when you click this it will list out it will list out whatever the possible journal for that particular title in the abstract okay you can check everything and based on uh, the uh, decision like i told you right the criteria you have to check so what are the criteria you have to check is the first one is a research metric so if you are writing a quality paper you have to check these two metrics one is a site score and one is the impact factor you can see that site score is about 6.6 so too good okay and the impact factor is about 3.818 okay and also you just see that this journal is having the acceptance rate of 24 percentage and also it is mentioned that what is the time taken for the first decision it's only about 8 weeks and time to publication that is once the acceptance is received within 2 weeks the paper will be published okay if you are satisfied in all these aspects next thing you have to look at this okay the publication model okay so here they have given two models one is open access model and one is a subscription model okay if you have enough fund to publish your paper in open access you have to pay around 2480 dollars okay if you don't have any money to publish the paper then what you can do is you can go with the no publication charge is a subscription model you can go to the subscription model and you can submit your paper so likewise you can check the journal they are prestigious level and that aim and scope and acceptance rate and the time frame and the fee so based on this you can select the journal and you can submit your paper so likewise we have the recommending system for ieee springer trailer taylor and francis wiley and these two as i told it will it's a common platform it will list out whatever the available journals are okay and the peer review process as you know that once a paper is submitted it will go to the editorial assistant he will do the plat check okay and the initial uh, formatting check everything it will be done and once it is done it will go to the editor in chief editor in chief will see whether the paper is within the scope or not and once it is within the scope it will go to the subject editor okay the subject editor will do a uh, preliminary check uh, then he will check whether the paper is within the scope is it having any novel content okay everything he will check and he will find suitable reviewer for your paper once the suitable reviewers are found the paper will be sent to the reviewer once the paper is uh, reviewed by the reviewer the reviewer will give the decision whether uh, to accept the paper or reject the paper or the revision okay based on the revision based on the decision you can take it so sometimes you will be getting a rejection sometimes like accept in the actual format there are accept with minor revision or accept with major revision like that you will be getting the content if you are uh, if you are getting the comments like accept with minor revision or major revision you have to do uh, revise you have to revise your paper based on the reviewer uh, suggestions once everything is done again you submit a paper again you follow the same process and finally the paper will be assessed by the editor if everything is fine the editor will give acceptance or rejection okay once the paper is accepted it will go for the production in the production time you have to do all the copyright issues everything all the copyright signing everything you have to do it and if if it is open access you have to pay the open access amount everything once finally it is everything is done then finally your paper will be published so this is what the entire peer review process
okay and uh, whether it is accepted or rejected don't worry okay uh, if it is accepted be happy if it is rejected just uh, take the commits positively and work on it and submit to the other good job mm -hmm. okay and as a authors okay as a researcher you should have the profiles in all these uh, uh, social medias okay so one is also id okay there is a orchid id they'll call it as orchid id okay orchid id is a unique id that all the researchers should have because nowadays for the submission itself the orchid id is uh, mandatory the next one is the web of science or the bubbles profile okay it is given by the clarivate analytics so here you can list out all your web of science papers based papers and also if you do any kind of reviews everything will be included in the profile so that anyone can see that which paper you reviewed how many papers you have reviewed how many papers how many web of science papers you have uh, uh, published and how many key uh, citations you have achieved for the web of science publications all these things will be listed in the profile and the next one is the scopus id and the google scholar id okay scopus id once you publish paper in the google uh, scopus then automatically id will be created for the particular researcher okay and you have to read it and you have to read it uh, sorry uh, once it is done then you can check with the scopus team and you can can ask them to create your scopus profile uh, with your recent affiliation and all okay then once it is done then all your papers from the day one the, whatever the paper you're publishing in scopus that will be included in your scopus profile okay in a similar way the google scholar also there then apart from that there are three uh, social medias are available like ResearchGate academy and microsoft academy okay you try to have your papers in the these three uh, social media so that uh, you can attract many people okay and your research also reaches many people okay you'll get a lot of comments from the people you may get some kind of collaboration from the people okay so to enhance your collaboration to enhance the quality to enhance the visibility try to keep uh, the profiles in these uh, any one of these uh, uh, social uh, media okay and i personally suggest to try to have your personal website so that you can consolidate uh, your complete activity and try to share your personal website with all your colleagues and the known people and your collaborators so that it will increase your visibility okay so with this i, I would like to thank so before thanking i just want to acknowledge uh, the thing i acknowledge the contents of other peers whose contents are being used to comprehend the subject better and i do so solely for the academic purpose i do not claim any ownership of any of the contents of the peers okay so with this acknowledgement i would like to thank you all people for giving this opportunity and for the patient listening okay if you have any uh, doubts okay if you want any clarifications you can contact me at any time okay this is my uh, mobile number and uh, email id even my uh, personal website is also given you can refer to it and you can contact me at any time so with this i just hand over the session to the coordinator ma'am uh, please proceed ma'am